Hello. Hi. And welcome once again to Wheel Takes, a podcast about the Wheel of Time, a series of fantasy novels written by Robert Jordan and completed by Brandon Sanderson. My name is Gus, and I have read every Wheel of Time book. And I'm Allie, and I am on book 10. Yes. This podcast only contains spoilers for what Allie has already read. And again today, that is everything up to and including the end of Winter's Heart. Allie. Well, yes. How are you? I've hit, I've hit double digits. You have. You're on this book 10. It's a big 10. moment for me. It's a big day. It's very exciting. How often in a series do you hit double digit With books? With most series? Never. Never. Unless they're fantasy and then sometimes Blast, sometimes which I'm reading now is only seven yeah but I and guess when if you I combine it with seven, all of the different with Akatar and Crescent City yeah yeah which inevitably once you read one you gotta read them all here I am uh worth mentioning real quick uh that the the show started the show came out Woo! we are uh waiting to get final approvals from the guilds before we loop, move forward with doing anything about that while it's airing while the strikes are going on because support uh, writers and actors. Uh, yeah, it's a fluid sure. situation so we're trying to stay kind of up to date with what are best guidelines at any given time and if we get confirmation that best guidelines are yes you guys can talk about the process of making the show because you were going to anyway then we're going to do that. If not then we're going to wait. So, uh, yep. sorry to leave you in a little bit of limbo. We're in limbo as well. We're in we're, limbo too. We're just trying to navigate a complex <clears throat> situation in as ethical way as we can, yes. keeping our integrity intact. Specifically, by the way, as people who are in the entertainment industry, the right. reason why we are being a little following different rules than a lot of other folks is not because we're bitter, because we're not. Uh, it's just because of our position. That's the only reason. Yeah, we're in a bit of a funky so place. So, if, if anybody starts coming at the other podcasters and YouTubers and going, well, Ali and Gus aren't. You stop it! Don't do that. Yeah, you you never have wheel takes his permission to bully anyone. Yeah, they're fine. I hope that's clear. So, Al, yeah. That having been said, guess what? What we've got some people to thank. Yay! We've got some new patrons, and horrifyingly, we have. An old patron who apparently we missed. What? During Wedding Geddon. This oh, person gosh. pinged me and they were like, hi, I don't want to be a bother. You're not. You're not. I don't think I got a, I don't think I heard a shout out. And I oh, no. screamed internally and externally. Uh, oh, that makes me so sad. So without I'm so sorry. any further ado. Yeah, if we ever skip you or you don't get your swag. Let us know. We'll try to figure out what to do. Yeah. We are not being a burden. Thank you for the high five, Haley C. Haley C, just like a poppin'. 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 You poppin'. Uh, a poppin', because I don't think I've done poppin'. I don't think so. I'm going with poppin'. Just like a poppin' fence. Ooh. Mm, a poppin' fence. First of all, you're aesthetically pleasing. Excellent. You're popping. Uh, you know, everywhere you go, people are just like, wow, where'd she get that outfit? Where'd she get that? You're probably one of those people, Haley, who can go to the thrift shop and find good things there. Mm. Like, I mean, I can do that. But there are some there are some people with particular talents. I feel like you, Haley, have have that talent of just being a put together person. Like even when you're in your casual wear, I bet you look amazing. Um, you're also, you know, they say good fences make good neighbors. Mm -hmm. You're a good neighbor. You know, Mr. Rogers would be proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your ability. You're probably one of those people who puts the cart back, you know, at the grocery store. Much needed, right? Somebody who really goes out of their way to make their neighborhood a better place and, uh, make everyone feel special. And also... You know the phrase on the fence? I'm on the fence about something. You really take the time to weigh your decisions before making your choice. And we could all do with being a little bit more careful and thoughtful about the ways that we contribute to our world. And you're somebody who goes out of their way to make sure that they are making the most ethical, responsible choices in a world where sometimes that can be really hard and nebulous. 
you are really always flying by your moral compass. And for that, we appreciate you. And thank you for being a part of this community. And uh, it's actually just Haley. So thanks, Haley. And thanks, as always, to all of our uh, patrons. Uh, Y'all are wonderful. She's more than just Haley. She's the Haley. The Haley. Uh, I, we might have more than one ha- Haley. I think a, we do, actually, because yeah. I think the other Haley I, re- I related to a comment. I seem to recall. That makes sense. Uh, Allie, here's what I want to know. But you're both the Haley to us. Where did we leave off? Oh, God, I have no fucking idea. Um, I'll give you a hint. Was Perrin doing something? My wife. Okay, so I'm right. Perrin was You'd doing You'd think, something. Was but it no. different my wife? It's a different my wife. It's not a my wife. It's my it's wa- it's more oh, of a oh Matt my Matt wife. Two on Matt was like that's my wife. That's my wife right and there. Two on that's just my wife. That right there. That. That's my wife. And two on just accepted that like that was like yep. And Schmier Lucia was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Schmier stop Lucia? saying that. You got to stop saying that. Yeah, because she was a cream cheese. I, oh, woman. I I knew where you were getting that from. Stop fucking saying that. Uh, says Schmier Lucia. Yeah, I feel like that's what she beat up that one Damani for. That would line up. Don't want to get punched in the dick because you say you're someone's wife. Shouldn't go around declaring people your wife. I understand why he did it. It's not. It a makes great sense look. in this context because well, you know. But if she didn't know, she'd be like, "What the?" Fuck? Probably would be like, "Who is because this he's man?" Also kidnapping her. Not great. It, yeah, I'd be. I'd be concerned. It's giving seven brides it's, for seven I, brothers. I'd be concerned. It's giving seven brides least. for seven brothers. You uh, know what I mean? We're gonna pick it up. Matt's gone. He's he's gone for the rest of this book. Possibly the rest of the series. I don't know. Just kidding. I know. Somebody uh, reminded me because we talked about Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Recently. Yes. Yes. Somebody reminded me of the fact that there's like it's way worse than that because it's the that whole story about the Sabine women. That's where they get the idea. Oh, yeah. OK. Where they're like, oh, the Romans just went and captured them and made them their wives. What a great plan. We should do that. Isn't that the plot of the Greek play Suppliants by Aeschylus? Is but it's from the perspective of the women, isn't it? Is that the Sabian women? I think it's the Sabian women. Sabine. I thought it was Sabine. Probably. Could, You're probably No, not. I definitely not. Uh, I think it was some Bible story. Oh, that would there make... There was a Bible story that... The Danaids formed... Like the, the Romans hmm. kidnapping a group of women. This is women fleeing a forced marriage to their Egyptian cousins. And, and then they take sanctuary... Wi- where in argos oh okay this makes all right so it's different that that's a different story i think yeah but it's a trilogy it's part of a trilogy i remember this so i remember they anyway irrelevant they sing a song called sobbing women is this supposed to be funny unfortunately yes and it's unfortunately kind of a bop Uh uh-huh and the women were sobbing 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 oh yeah anyway how the times maybe have changed some hopefully for a little bit uh, it's fine. I'm actually listening to the Always Sunny podcast right now. Oh yeah, which where they go through and watch their old episodes and talk about them, and they're on season one. And they're like, yeah, probably wouldn't have done that the same way. Stand by a lot of it. Probably fucked up a lot too. It's really quite fun to hear them talk about because you know that well, show. Yeah, I mean, I think listen, we're all evolving. As Brie likes Constantly. to say, make help create the world where your art ages poorly. Poorly. I think I think that's very true. I I mean I think about even my own stuff that I've written and I think mm, I should update that. Yeah. <laughs> I should update that. That's not Another reason why, you know, the wheel of time is so fun is because a lot of it aged well and a lot of it didn't. Well, I even will listen to some of our episodes from a couple of years yeah, ago and I'll like, think to myself, oh, I would have I wouldn't have said it like have done that, that different. now. I uh, I think yeah, I think I've I've evolved a lot as a person in the past three years, and I always appreciate everybody's patience with that. Allie, we're going to dive right in yeah. 15 minutes in, and uh, 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 we're going to talk about probably th- th- three of the four remaining chapters, because I think the last chapter deserves its own discussion. Yeah. The last chapter uh, leading into book 10, the legendary crossroads of twilight so uh uh first things first yeah do you have i know you don't 
notes. I didn't. I didn't take notes. You didn't to take the notes because you were having too much fun. Because these chapters are kind of bangers, aren't I they? I turned to you and I said, "These are good chapters." Yeah, he Robert. He slaps the roof with the last couple of chaps. Yeah, inevitably, even maybe, maybe not. We'll find out if he does this in crossroads of twilight i'm not encouraged by how people slaps talk about the it. roof of the last couple of chaps and says this baby can fit so much action it's true he does do that and i appreciate it every time ellie we're in chapter 32 a portion of wisdom a portion of wisdom this is the chapter logo what is it you are taking a picture of the dog, which is more important. The dog's asleep. It is and truly more so important. Cute. That is not a condemnation. That is, I'm explaining that it is more important. Uh, what, what, what the, what the good what God in fucking heaven is this? Is that the band of the red hand? No, we've seen this before, and you were confused last time I too. I seem to recall. Is it? Hmm. Can I look at him? Yep. Well, there's a hand. Yep. Oh, is it a budar? Farm adding, which is where we are. Oh, right, 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 right. Because oh, all of the remaining like chaps. The, the thing that keeps the magic from at bay. Yeah, I think so. The, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, some kind of angrail. Yeah, uh, it's a terror angrail of some kind. Uh, and the difference between that is that the saw angrail, oh, the terror angrail has like a special purpose. Yeah. And the saw angrail is like a super angrail. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And an angrail is just an angrail. <laughs> Well done. Hey, I'm so excited. I did it. Chapter 32, a portion again. of wisdom, Rand. It only took 10 books. <laughs> Rand chapter. The Golden Wheel was a large inn just off the Alvarin Market. Not the Alviarin Market, the Alvarin Market. <clears throat> I keep inhaling saliva, which is very badly done of me. I've been breathing and swallowing saliva for like 30 years. Now I you'd think hate I know how to do when it. that happens because you feel like such an idiot. With a long, beam-ceilinged common room crowded with small, square tables. Even at midday, no more than one table in five had anyone sitting at it, though usually an outland merchant facing a woman in sober colors with her hair, one on top of her head, or gathered up at the nape of her neck. The women were merchants, too, or bankers. In farm adding, banking and trade were forbidden to men. All the foreigners in the common room were male, since the women among them could be taken into the women's room. The smells of fish mm. and mutton cooking in the kitchens filled the air, and occasionally a shout from one of the tables summoned one of the serving men who waited in a line at the back of the room. I'm getting, like, Wimbledon country club vibes. Yeah, I... I never... Maybe that's it's my gender as a spectrum thing i'm just never down for like rigid spaces uh, for like men and women i don't know which is different from saying like there shouldn't be safe spaces yeah, that's a different thing yeah i know it's I, I was like let me be careful yeah. how i say this because uh, it's tricky there is a, a play there are places listen there's nowhere more sacred in my mind than the women's restroom we have such a good time in there but the sisterhood can expand to include as many people who want to be included in the sisterhood as possible. Yes. Provided they're non-toxic and uphold that safe space. I have no problem with anyone being in the women's restroom. It sounds a lot more Does that fun. that make sense? I understand you. You know what? You know, you know what the men, the vibe in the men's restroom is? What? Get in, get out. Well, see, I feel like, I feel like this is the place where this people are complimenting each This is why gender-neutral bathrooms are outfits. great. This is the place where well, we're giving each saying, other yeah. makeup tips. Yeah. This is the place where, you know, you run out of toilet paper, someone will get you some. If you I know? run out of toilet paper in a in a public restroom, I'm just going to start crying and try to oh, go so into vulnerable. the toilet. It's so vulnerable. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it's a place where you can get some relationship advice. I I love I I love the women's room. So, uh what's what, what with Rand? What's Rand up to? Rand is struggling he's having a rough time he's doing bad what's he doing what's, I feel like what, that's, what's the that's move my default answer regardless of anything because i'm yes. right nine times out of ten well that's usually how he's feeling what's I, he up to? even what he's a, in a good mood he's a struggle bus you know what i mean what's he what's his plan what's he doing right now what's he working on what is rand working on he is working on who's he looking for let me say Nine. what group of people is he looking for 
What group of people who he thinks might be a stick in the mud for his current plans is he looking for? The Black Tower? Yeah, he is looking the for the, of the uh, Black Tower. Yes. Oh, this is right. This is they do the thing yeah, where this Nynaeve is like gets him up on the roof. The spy movie in a in a, a farmatic. Oh, dunk, yeah. dunk, 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 dunk. I remember dunk, it being dunk, quite dunk, dramatic. Dunk, 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 now, admittedly, dunk, dunk. Due to time constraints, I didn't read these chapters for again in preparation, so I'm going to be jumping around asking you a lot of questions Doodly. and uh, consulting the encyclopedia alongside. Doodly. 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 Bum, bum, bum. But yeah, Rand is, uh, he's looking for the boys who he believes to be back in town. <laughs> he gets a drink. He has mulled wine. Uh, I don't think he lets it get cold. That's a war crime, and it's the worst thing anyone can do in these books. It is objectively the worst thing anyone can do. There were a dozen empty tables right at hand, but he wanted to be in a corner at the front of the room where he could see who came in without being seen himself. Smart, smart. And as he edged his way between the tables, snatches of conversation caught his ear. Lots of snatches, huh? (laughs) What? What? Excuse? (laughs) Pardon me? (laughs) No, they're all in the women's room. Oh. For most of them, anyway. <laughs> the women, what is it called? It's the women's, yes, the women's room. Capital W, capital, capital U. The girls' room, as they say on the Amanda show. More than a week had passed since he had killed Rochade and Kisman had gotten away. And in all those days, this was the first time he'd gotten more than a shrug or a shake of the head when he showed the drawings because he's looking for uh, the other guys. Although I, I, I recall Kisman died didn't Fain kill yeah Kisman? he got sliced and diced well okay we get an answer for what happened to all the black tower people but all of them got sliced and diced by pad and Fain. something along those lines yeah uh so it's it's, it's some people talk politics and they had people pose <clears throat> get this this is the tea they had people okay first nine even land she brings them over to the little the little place she's got this little necklace bracelet jewelry of some kind adornment Ad- she's got some kind of adornment that is an angry alt that she can store a little bit of magic yes in. she has a well even in this very magicless place yes and she uses it to like james bond them onto the roof it's fancy and you were like this is a plot hole he can't she can't do this and i went aha you would think that is where you're wrong my wife but robert jordan once again went yeah you know what Fuck the rule I made. I'm going to make a way that it doesn't have to apply here. But you know what? You know how I feel about that? That's fine. That's fine. That's a great idea. Yeah. If you can find a way around it that makes sense, then find a way around it that makes sense. But so she's got this little magic thing that she uses to propel them onto the roof. They get in there. Open the door. What's inside, Gus? Dead bodies. Couple of dudes. Which is troubling because earlier... They were seeing this, they were spying on this peddler dude because they figured that the guys in there would want a snack and they spied them going to that peddler, those those self-same dead guys, and they knew they would go into their rooms that they were letting and then the landlady would lock them in because, I don't know, that's just how it works. That's that's the, that's the move. She's just like, you know what? We're locking them in because they're staying above the bar. Mm-hmm. So, so when she's done for the night, she locks them in so that they, so that no one can come in or out. And she's like, and you'll just have to be cool with that. If you have trouble with it, leave me an Airbnb rating. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, now all of the wait, things you're describing, so by the way, there. happen in the next chapter. None of that happens in this chapter. Well, what happens in this chapter? He walks around and talks to people and looks at things and thinks about stuff. No. Okay. So back to what I was saying. <laughs> so, cause this is the interesting part. Yeah, Sure. Is there anything important that we need to talk about from this chapter? Uh, or can I continue uh, to tell my tape? Uh, uh, Because I'm really excited to talk about this stuff. Yeah, that part's okay. Let's just. This is not me being a dick. No. This is me being really excited to talk about this. I'm trying to figure out if there's much to talk. Nynaeve's got her. I'm (laughs) great. I feel like I covered it. Mistress Keen. That's the the lady. Yeah, like Rand gets a letter that says Kisman's dead and that that he knows where Torval. Okay, yes. Torval and what's, what's his name? Oh, the big letter that said trap on it. Yeah, that's the one. And Min's like, that's a trap. And Rand's like, all right, but 
it's not a trap if I know it's a trap. He, and I'm like, he, mm, he gets some political but what news. If, but what if they have a trap in case you know it's a trap? Uh, then you're the trap king. He, he, by Fetty Wap. He's like, why? Min and Nine even refused to spend one more hour tramping the streets, as Min had put it. And he suspected Olivia was only going through the motions of show, only going through the motions of showing the drawings when she did even that. They were all three out of the city for the day, in the hills, he judged, from what the bond told him of Min. And Luz Theron goes, Why can't the women be right? This city is worse than any prison. There is no source here. Why would they stay? Why would any sane man stay? We could ride out, beyond the barrier, just for a day. A few hours. Light, just for a few hours. <laughs> oh, light. Why do I have a madman in my head? Why? Why? Rand is like, shut up, dude. Shut up. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You are calling me mad? That's offensive. That's bullshit. You're the mad one. We all know it. It's you. Hi, you're the problem. It's you. So, yeah, like, R- Rand and Luz Theron talked to each other. He kind of thinks, he's like, talk, this is nice to go channel. It would be nice. And then Luz Theron is like, FYI, uh, if you puke, if you do that exorcist thing while you're using the Choiden chi- 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 call, you're going to blow up. If you puke? That's not the reason. You're afraid. If the sickness if the sickness takes you while you're trying to use the access, Terangriel, it could kill you or worse. It could kill us all. Imagine puking yourself to death. Puking the world to death. <laughs> Have you ever puked so hard you killed the world? <laughs> they tried to kill me, and I want them dead for it. Oh, wait, this is Rand. Sorry. L- Rand is less frenetic. He goes, they tried to kill me, and I want them dead for it. If it takes a little time, well, maybe the sickness will pass by then. Burn you, I have to live until the last battle. And Luz there and goes, <laughs> It says he laughed Stop more wildly than laughing before. Like That's Luz. That. That's his head. I'm not, not talking to you. I'm talking to Luz. It's yeah. creepy and it's weird and I hate it. So this, if someone laughed like that in my head, I'd be like, I don't know what I would do, actually. So this Ileaner busts in and talks to the innkeeper and yeah. And then all of a sudden, a short, stout woman comes in, and it's Varen. And she goes, Varen. So you are here after all. Well, 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 Varen. Well, well, well. Oh, do you want to talk about this? I mean, it's kind of show spoilers. All right, if you don't want to hear what happens in the first episode of The Wheel of Time. Yeah, this is relevant because it affects one of Allie's theories. If you don't want to know one plot point from the first and second episode of season one, episode one and two... Uh, which is not really a spoiler. It's just a thing skip in the show. Skip to the time jump. Skip, I don't know, skip a minute and a half. So. I'll, I'll put a timestamp. It appears that they have replaced Vandine with Varen. They have combined the characters, which I have said from the beginning would be a good choice. Did I not? You have. Yes. But I noticed no one was pissing themselves online about that choice. At least not yet. So it stands to reason. And I couldn't help but notice that they talked about that that thing that was used to kill Adelius a Crimson bunch. Crimson thorn. Uh huh. <coughs> hmm. Uh, mm, uh, mm. But I'm like, okay, if, if they have to be of the same allegiance, because if one of them had to be swapped to meet the other's need, right? If one, if like Varen was made evil by being Vandine, or Vandine was made good by being Varen, right? People would be like losing their absolute collective shits right now, right? I just know that about you all. I love you very much. <laughs> but they were losing their shit. Like, I'd be seeing, like, some grumblings about that choice. But so far, everyone seems to be pretty okay with it, right? Which leads me to believe that either they're both evil or they're both good. Now, Vandy and I'm pretty positive it's evil. So when this choice was made, I screamed to Gus, Varen's a dark friend confirmed. She did scream that. Now, you're predicating this on a lot of things. You have a very elaborate, I just want to mention, you have a very elaborate house of cards that are that are all built on additional houses of cards that you've structured together if for I this. am wrong about Van Dien, which is, in my mind, the most interesting because, choice he could make. Well, this is predicated on... That fits his thesis to a T. Your following theories have to be correct for this to make sense. Okay. One, Van Dien killed Adelius. Two... Ah, uh, that is certain. Van Dien is a dark friend. Inter- 
Well, three. if Mandine killed Adelius, then why? how would three. she not be a dark friend? People care about who killed Adelius. Four, it is a major plot point. Well, how could you not ca- care about who killed Adelius? I, I'm She's not sugge- I'm saying that these are a lot of predictions you're making. Old woman. Yeah. She's an old woman. First of all, she was fabulous on the show. She was. Fabulous. Loved her. 10 out of 10. Loved that character. Second of all, why would... What, uh, what, uh, what was I even trying to say? I don't know. I just, I think that it's the... Well, uh, why would people not care about that? I love a mystery. Does no one else in this room love mysteries? We all love Half this. Half of That's us are neurodivergent exists. fucks. Yeah. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not saying if, you're wrong. If, uh, I'm judging just saying... from all of the ADHD reach outs that I get, not to mention the autistic reach outs that I get, I... I pull very well with the neurodivergent community. So most of the people listening are neurodivergent. I imagine that most people who make it to the end of 15 books are neurodivergent as fuck. I'm just assuming here. There's some, we, 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 we are all very. I'm just out here ass- I'm making a wild assumption, but very like, passionate people. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so my thing is. You, if there's one thing I know about the neurodivergent that community right, is we love be. a fucking mystery. Yeah. So there's no way like we had a casual double murder on screen and went, oh, well, don't give a fuck who did that. That's true. It was like the most interesting thing that happened in that book. Listen, there was a, this, this is a lot of discussion if you go back into the theory land forums from when the books were coming out. This was hotly debated. I'm saying everyone cared about this. Okay, obviously. I I might just be messing with you. If Robert Jordan whiffed on an opportunity to make Van Dien the killer, thereby making, one, the most interesting choice that he could have made in that situation because everyone else is a dull, dull dud. Two, proving his thesis once again about, like, how how, how there's no, like, you can't go too far. There's always a way to go back, right? And that a dark friend could be anybody and they have their reasons. That he, this is something he started with Inktar and that the show is continuing to extrapolate on in a genius way, in my opinion. Right? Like what they did with the dark friend social in my mind was genius. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about someday. it when we can. But so for me, my thought process is, okay, obviously everyone killed, cared about Adelius because we're all neurodivergent fucks who love a mystery. Two... There, Van Dien is definitely the killer of Adelius because it's the most interesting choice and proves Robert Jordan's thesis. Three, that would ipso facto make her a dark friend, Black Aja, because why else would she kill her? Well, what if she were? Then she would have told everybody. Uh, what if she didn't want her, her legacy to be tarnished that way? That's an interesting thought. But then why kill Ispen in such a brutal way? Why not just kill them both easy? Hmm. Why kill Ispen? Ispen would have talked. I don't know. I'm just saying it's possible. I'm not, I'm not, you know. You've given me something to think about, but I think that it's more compelling if she's a dark friend who fucked up. Let me ask you, let me ask you this question. And so if I am wrong, it is Robert Jordan who is wrong. (laughs) Let me ask you this question. Hmm. Does this, because you, you definitively and resolutely said several times uh, in the past couple of books, Varen's got something sketchy going on. She might be Black Aja. She might be this. She might be that. But she is a good guy. She is working for the good people. Her goals are noble. Well, if Van Dien is not good, then Varen is not good. Well, what if... Because you because posited... otherwise people would be pissing themselves. No. Am I wrong? No, I think that, you know... I've, I've... Pissing themselves. In a way where I would be like, what's going on? Sure, that does like, happen Like, they wouldn't say it, like, in explicit terms, but they'd be like, there's, like, ramifications to this. Has anybody thought about the ramifications I love this is said with love with love. Yes. And a smile on my face. But they would be saying that. Well, they, there was a character cast and the name of the character was Eludrin. And there was. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the people who thought immediately there was that, that meant that Eludra had been replaced. A lot of a lot of very charming hullabaloo about this. And without giving anything, anything away, we now know who that character is. It's not Eludra. I'm just begging us all. We've lovingly. all been there. We've lovingly. all been there. Know, We've all been there. But, but I'm just begging us all lovingly to just like wait and see. Wait and see. It'll keep your blood pressure down. Are you saying waffo? As someone who lives with anxiety, heart palpies. Heart palpies? <laughs> little palps. Little palpies. As somebody who lives with a little heart palpies. It's palpy. a party in my chest cavity and no one is invited because right. I'm socially anxious. 
<laughs> you know, like how Rand has a bunch of sh- like people in his head. You've got. I've got a bunch of hearts in my body. Great. That's okay. what it feels like. So, heart. As somebody palpies. gets a little heart palpies, you don't want these. These aren't fun. Like it does make you feel like you're dying for a hot minute. So, like, do everything you can to de-stress in your life. Wait and see. Take deep breaths. Go for a walk in some garden somewhere. Gardens are nice. Gardens are nice. Uh, gardens Parks, of the moon, even. Green spaces. Yes. Good places to go when you're feeling the heart palpies. Yes. All right. Go to an archaeological dig. Be a bone hunter. Okay, I don't so know. speaking of heart palpies, can I talk about the next chapter now? Uh, yes. Okay. So first, we open. Actually, you can't quite talk about the next chapter yet. Vivarin comes in, which is what prompted this, and she goes, So... You're here after all. Your innkeeper thought you intended to walk up to the Averin, but uh, she was not sure. I'm afraid Mistress Keen doesn't pay much attention to the comings and goings of men. And here I am with my shoes soaked through and my stockings. I used to like walking in the rain when I was a girl, but it um, seems to have lost some of its charm somewhere along the way. I accidentally ended up in the Black Aja because I just wasn't paying attention. Again, how do you accidentally join the Black Aja? She would find a way. How do you accidentally join the Black I, Aja? I would absolutely accidentally join the Black Aja because they would have said something and I would have asked them to repeat themselves too many times in my head. And I would be like, okay, now they think I'm an idiot. So I'm just going to say yes to the next thing they say. <laughs> uh, what's fair in here to talk it's about? It's called having a neurodivergent problem. It's called uh, auditory processing disorder. And it's real and it exists. And life doesn't come with subtitles. And it's unfortunate. So some of us might join the Black Aja by accident. Yeah, so so they chat a little bit and, you know, p- political updates and news. That would be and... why she'd be so iconic as a dark friend. She's all of us, <laughs> neurodivergent people. Uh, he goes, Cadsway and send you? I like this. She goes, oh, no, she would never do that. I just thought you might want to hear the news. Cadsway's out riding with the girls, though I suppose I, I shouldn't call Olivia a girl, an intriguing woman. Much too old to become a novice, unfortunately. No, no, come on, oh, come yes. on. Well, first of all, Egwene said, we're, uh, control delete. Very on unfortunate. That. That's, no, that's dumb as fuck. Control, control delete? What? C- what's control delete? What, are you saying control delete or control alt delete? I'm just curious. Control alt delete, but I misspoke. That's a different thing, too. What is it? I don't right, wait, know. Wait, what what is the message you're trying to send? I'm saying she pressed backspace on that. Oh, dumb control shit. Z. Why is it control Z? Why isn't it control delete if you want to delete something? Well, that would just be backspace. If you hit control, actually, if you hit control delete, I think it deletes the entire next word. And if you control backspace, the I think next it deletes. Word. Yeah, so if you put your cursor in the middle of a string of text and you hit control delete. Oh, you have a MacBook, though, don't you? Right. Okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So everything's different. Right. I don't know. I'm not a computer expert. It doesn't I'm matter either, saying. Gus. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that Egwene said that was dumb as fuck, and I agree. Yeah. And then he's like, Varen, why, did, why are you here? And she's like, I'm going to give you some updates about stuff you kind of already, the reader kind of already knows. The Sean Shanner and Ilian a little bit. They're, they're still moving along. That whole battle thing that happened in book A didn't do a ton. Uh... He says that he's going to leave Farmatting the next day. He wants Cad Swain to be his advisor. Good. Thoughts on that? Good idea? Yes. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. She's an old lady who knows what she's about. Varen, on the other hand. <laughs> I'm getting concerned. I think one of the things you didn't want me to figure out is that Varen is a dark friend. You're going to have to raffo. You're so mad right now. You're <laughs> stewing in it. You're like, fuck Rafe. So Rand, you think my wife wouldn't have caught on to your whims and whimsies? Rand goes back to the the, the inn and Lan Lan busts in and you know they they gab for a while. They talk about the, yeah, okay. So Nine Eve comes in and chapter thirty two. Yeah, yes. they talk and then Olivia. I want to talk about thirty two. Anyway. talks. Olivia talks about she thinks Cad Swain's cool. okay. Yeah, there's not. There's really almost nothing of great significance plot wise to discuss in here sorry i've just i'm just really excited yeah we're excited to get to the cool shit just, not that this isn't cool but it's just but, like nothing's but, really happening but, but james bond <laughs> yeah okay so Catswain kind of kind of likes kind of oh, likes so Kat Swain and uh, uh, the, uh 
he Nynaeve got. Nynaeve kind of likes Kat Swain? Nynaeve kind of likes Kat Swain, yeah. Of course, because they're like the same person. Tell me I'm wrong. They're not. That, well, they have a lot of similarities. Uh, the innkeeper gives Min a letter that. Let Nynaeve cook and she becomes Kat Swain. <laughs> that says to Rand, says, I know who you are and I wish you well, but I also wish you gone from farm adding. The Dragon Reborn leaves death and destruction where he steps. I now know why you are here, too. You killed Rashade. <laughs> you killed Rashade. And Kisman is also dead. Wait, I came over the joke. Yes. The White Cloaks want to let Nynaeve cook. Oh, uh, brutal. Torval and Gedwin have taken the top floor above a bootmaker named Zerum on Blue Carp Street, just above the Ilion Gate. Bootmaker. Kill them and go, and leave Farm Adding in peace. Okay, this is a trap. And Min says that immediately. She's like, this is a trap. Don't be fucking dumb. So. Rand, no, no. Rand, Rand goes, it's not a trap if I know it's a trap. <laughs> and it's just the title card is Rand falls into a trap that he knows about. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to end the Black Tower split. Rand does not end the Black Tower split. <laughs> I love this joke. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 Okay, so here's the thing. Yes. Can we talk about chapter 32? Yeah, that's the end of chapter uh, 32. So we're going to talk about chapter 33, Allie. Chapter 33. Before I was rudely interrupted. Blue Carp Street has logo. Um, It's a knife. It's a dagger. It's the ruby hilted dagger. It's the dagger. All right, Allie. Take it away. Take it away. I I would play spy music, but copyright strikes. They walk in. The two guys they saw at the market are now dead, but they've been dead for a while. Mm -hmm. So the people who are at the marketplace for the little snack were fake the whole time. Oh my God. Holy bagoli. So then, holy cannoli, everyone. Holy cannoli. So then, oop, sorry. The dog wagged into me. <laughs> um, He's wagging to sleep and I was surprised by it. And I thought it was one of those spotted orb weavers. We had a lot of fucking spiders in California. A lot of fucking spiders. Yeah. So then, Pat and Fane shows up. He had killed them all with the dagger. They're all goo on the floor. They're not good. They're all goo on the floor. They, they're they goo on the floor. They're goobers. Should have used a sock. <laughs> I regret that one. <laughs> Every couple of books, I just got to throw one in there that's just like, Gus said that? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> You're silly. We got to earn the explicit tag somehow. Yeah, right. exactly. We're really making that explicit tag work. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So that happens. They're goo on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So. <laughs> Go. Moving on. Go, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pat and Fane kicks the door in. Pretty much. Enters. You keep, yeah. What? I know, you keep I bonking keep, the I keep poor bonking sleeping the dog. dog. Yeah. Because I have to kick for emphasis. Yeah. So I kicks the door in. Pa-pa! Yeah. And then he goes, it's me, Pat and Fane. <laughs> it's I'm a me, bad guy. Pat and Fane. And he just like mustache twirls at them with his little dagger. Then there's a fight? Yeah. Yes. There's a fight. <laughs> okay. There's the Fane, fight. Fane flees, actually. Fane runs. Oh, he's like, it's me. This is a trap. But also, bye. He sends, because t- Torum Riotin's there. Oh, Because Torm Riot right. has fully thrown his lot in with weird scuttle crab guy. Well, I mean, as you would, yeah. right? Now, here's the thing. I think this makes sense because Fane is half Mordeth, and Mordeth's whole thing is he's an advisor, and he's good at getting people to trust him and listen to him, which was also how he got tight with well, and, uh, the White Cloaks and how he got tight with Elida, because like, all he does is scuttle from city to city and make friends with the shitty people. And, Please continue. Sorry. And, well, yeah, but it's like the shitty people who think they're good people. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, is he's like, let me like black and white morality this with you, uh, because that's like Shio, Shadow Logos' whole thing, mm-hmm. right? So it's like all people who think they're good people, but they suck, and his presence around them is pernicious. 
Yeah. It's toxic. Turns them all bad. Some people think that this is why Elida went from fairly cunning and shitty, but, you know, relatively stable in the first few books to being like kind of off the deep end with the hubris clock now is because she hung out with Fane for for a while. But doing what? Do we know? With Fane? Just like getting advice from him. I just, he does not seem like someone I would take advice from. Yeah, but that's the Mordeth thing. It's because he's half Mordeth and people listen to Mordeth. It's just kind of Mordeth's deal. That's his bag. I'm just saying, if they're crab walking around and licking knives, maybe not a person you want to take advice from. One of my favorite scenes in the early books is still the scene in book one when they get to, I think, Camelin. And Rand is like, this is like a weird beggar running around in rags, shitting on the floor over there. I wonder who that is. And then the guy like scuttles out of the crowd and points at him and screeches. And he's like, oh, it's Pat and Fane. What's up, Pat and Fane? And then he like howls and runs off. And he's like, oh, OK, bye. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Allie took another picture of the dog. It's very cute. Oh, my God. He's so cute. And then like book two, maybe Fane's kind of always had this. Because remember book two when Egwene spends like the first 80 pages of the book being like i'm just gonna keep taking soup to my buddy pad and fane Ugh. how you doing buddy you feeling better I was like girl and he what? shrieks and his guards like bleed out of their asses girl and- he's the reason winter night happened maybe we don't take soup to the person who sabotaged your whole it's community. so funny God, women really will put up with such <laughs> trash behavior it's true don't don't uh so Girls, if your husband is scuttling and has a cursed dagger. If he's a licking that cursed dagger. he's licking that cursed dagger and everyone who comes in contact with him starts getting the, like their hairs, you know, falling out in patches and they start muttering under their breath. Consider finding a new man. Call 1-800-DIVORCE-LAWYER. 1-800-DON'T-MARRY-THE-CREEPY-MURDER-MAN. Uh, so... Call 1-800-I-DON'T-WANT-TO-END-UP-IN-A-BARREL, PROBABLY. So we're going to keep keep her rolling. It's always a fucking barrel. Chapter 33, Blue Carp Street. We start off with whose POV? We start out with 90? Min. It's a min chap. That's right. The whole right. thing's a min chap? No, it turns into a Rand yeah. chap. But I thought it turned Rand, into a 90 chap. No, it's next chap. Rand has to tell Min he, she can't come with... Which makes sense because he's going to do but an assassinate. Min is peeved about Min's not that. happy. Yeah, because she's like, this is a trap. You got a mysterious letter from I, a mysterious man. It's very obviously a trap. I mean, sh- is she wrong? No, she's not. It's very clearly a trap. Like, she goes, you admit this has to be a trap. Lan admits it. A half-blind goat in Salasin has more brains than to walk into a trap. And he goes... Well, trap isn't really a trap if you know it's there. I don't know if that's true. If you know it's there, maybe you can see a way to walk in so it isn't a trap at all. And she hurls a knife right past his head. Well, okay. So that's not emotional regulation. That's not uh, the domestic bliss that I think we're all striving for. (laughs) I just think you shouldn't throw a knife at the person you love's head. And And I will stand by that. And shades of Davram. And she's like, dude, they might have mercenaries. There might be any number of swordsmen. Rand's like, I just don't think there are. Okay, well, there's one and it's Riot and Guy. Yeah, it's Torum. It's your boy who does not make it out of this, by the way. He is not my boy. No, it's he's not your boy. Bro sucks. Remember when he was he was trying real hard to get uh, get hot and heavy with sweet Caroline Damadred? Um, and my Caroline woman? Damadred was like, I'll chop it off. If you bring it near me, I'll chop God, it the fuck off. Her. Good for her. She's I'm, got an excellent judge of character. I'm I still so pissed that we didn't get the romantic escapade adventures of escape of Caroline Damadred and Darlin Cisnera. I would have absolutely love to I see that. I would read the fuck out of that. Someone fan fiction that adventure for Yeah, us. it's like a, ew, trying to get out of Cadswain's palace in a box. I feel like it's the perfect rom-com. It's so cool. Because then they got had to come back and, and like tied together in a bag. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Hilarious. It's so goofy and so funny. It's giving like Pacha and... Um, yeah, Cusco. Cusco. From some movie. Don't tell me we're going to go over a huge waterfall. Like it's giving that. So... Uh, it would be so funny. So, uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he's like, nah, there's no mercenaries here. It's going to be fine. It's totally going to work. It's good. Mm. And then she she runs to the table and she gets out the strap. Oh. Uh, so I don't know if we should be privy to this. Yeah. But she's, she's, I guess she's going to like beat him about the head and shoulders until he decides not to go to do this. I really don't think that that's a good way to treat your spouse. But... But, you know, she doesn't. She's, like, just threatening to beat him with it. And then she's standing... This is funny, because she's standing there holding what is essentially a cat of nine tails. Oh? Staring at Rand, who is... Is he changing? Or is he just walking around? Oh, he's he's looking at his sword. And then Nynaeve, Lan, and Olivia walk in. Um, yeah. So, so then they're like, oh, should we should come we, back? Should we leave? Or participate? I mean... If that's where the evening's going. Uh, <clears throat> and they discuss whether or not to do it, but they're going to do it. And Rand, you know, gets a sword on. Da, 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 da. And they they assign Olivia to babysitting duty. Oh. For lack of a better term. Because they're like, okay, sit here with her. Make sure she doesn't follow us. Okay, I'd be so annoyed if that were me. Yes. I'd be like, I'm a thousand years old. And they, Actually, no. If I were a thousand years old, I'd want to sit. They close the door and Olivia Olivia goes, shall we play games to cross the time, to pass the time, man? Yeah. <laughs> Cat's cradle. I've got canasta. <laughs> Does anybody want to play Stratego? I got Pinochle. Not yeah, to you know. brag, but I've been playing a lot of bridge lately. I've got pickleball. I'm trying to think of all the things older people like. I brought a cornhole, uh, cornhole boards, bag toss if you're outside of the Midwest. Cornhole is white culture. Cornhole is specifically, I feel like, born in the mid, like Wisconsin and Michigan. Yeah. And Chicago. Okay, what and else? Indiana and what Ohio. Else? Shuffleboard. So the Midwest. Oh, people most like of shuffleboard. The shuffleboard. I have a crocodile table. What is a crocodile? Crocodile? It's uh, it's kind of hard to explain. What's that game where you wrote bocce ball? I brought Clask. Oh, I love Clask. Clask is good. We haven't played Clask. No, we while. haven't. Okay. Actually, you know what would be totally on brand? Stones, which is just go. Which we should play again. It's been a while since we played Go. I don't like Go because you kick my ass every time. (laughs) You'll get better. You play more, you get better. It's how you get better. No, I'm an adult. I'm not learning things anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so so they go out. Min talks about how Niney... Min thinks about... I tried to say thinks and talks at the same time. It came out as Fox about... Min thinks about how Niney says please to Olivia. Fox. (laughs) Sorry. Now you're good. (laughs) I just have to say it for myself. Okay. Yep. And men's like all pissed off. Meanwhile, at the at the place they're staying, at the Airbnb where they lock them in for some reason. Well, wait, dun, wait. Dun, wait. Dun, 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 what? Uh, she tries to sneak out, or like run past Olivia. It doesn't work. Olivia's like, I'm a thousand years old. And men goes, Stop do you remember? It. Do you remember those talks we had about men, Olivia? The other woman turned bright red, and Min hurriedly added, I, I, I mean the one about how they don't always think with their brains. Did did Min have to give Olivia the talk? I don't know. Is that what that's implying? Because Olivia was like a Damani from the time she was like yes, 12. Yes, wait. She had often heard women sneer that some other women knew nothing about men, but she'd never actually met one of those until she encountered Olivia. Oh. She really did know nothing. Poor girl. Get Olivia laid. If get, she's into if that's that. what she wants. Get Olivia laid. If that's what she wants. She's a liberated uh, wait, woman. Wait, you know, she, she goes. She can decide what she wants. She <laughs> goes, <laughs> Randall get himself in more than enough trouble without me. I'm going to find Kadsuane. And if you try to stop me. And she like holds up a fist. And Olivia's like, I'm magic. Not here she's not. Oh, yeah. Olivia looks at her and goes. Let me get my cloak and I'll go with you. <laughs> so they leave and then. You know what? In hindsight, now that I remember that she can't do she goes magic. With, yeah. What did they expect Olivia to be able I to do while can, babysitting? But she could still fucking fight. Yeah, sure. Yeah. By the way, Olivia saying, remains like goat. Uh, Olivia might be one of my new favorite characters. So we switch to Rand. How's Rand? Now you can go on with your uh, James Bond Ocean's Eleven shit. Go ahead. Uh, okay, bum, bum, yeah. bum, 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 there and thinks about meat pie is called pasties. 
That's not what they are over here. And Rand is like juggling the pot. They are actually in in northern Michigan. I think they pronounce it pasty. Okay, pasty. Yeah. But pasty? Isn't that like a little nipple thing? a little nipple tassel. Yeah, a little nipple tassel. Um, Yeah, so like Rand buys a pie and there's a chinless fellow and they talk and he's trying to get information and da-da-da-da-da. So spying, spying, spying. Any thoughts on any of this? It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And he spies on these people all for naught because they're not the people he's seeking. They're cleverly disguised. Who is, uh, is it Pat and Fane? It's and Pat and Fane. And what's his face disguised as them? Yeah, kind of. They're like in the next room. He finds the, he finds the corpses. No, cause like he sees them order food. Yeah. He watches Gedwin and Tor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they're, Fane can just like do shit, you know? Like, you remember the flies thing in book two? Sure. That was just Fane doing, like, a time trap, which doesn't make any sense metaphysically, but it's cool. I mean, it was cool that he saw them and then they were dead. That was kind of cool. Yeah, because, like, they're some kind of illusion. But did Lan also see them? Yeah, no, they're, like, some kind of illusion that Fane made with his Fane magic. Matt Mashadar shit, I guess. Okay. Yeah, no, like, it, it makes zero sense in context. I thought that they had disguised themselves as the two guys they were seeking. I don't think you so. Know, like, they got some wigs. Well, because because in a minute... And they took advantage of the fact that it was dark. But in a minute, they, they find um they find their bodies and then go into the next room and Fane and, and the other... Uh, uh, Torum are there. And then Rand, like... Yeah, they did a quick change. ...tries to follow Fane, but he sees Gedwin and Torval coming up the stairs. Oh. And then he attacks them, and, like, the illusion disappears. So, like, Fane is creating these images of Torval and Gedwin okay. somehow. There is absolutely Weird. no power related thing. Is it like thing. a mirror of mists type but of he, thing? But he's not using the power, right? Well, unless well, unless an Ashaman a has different... a well, which Rand would be able to tell. Well, yeah. you're using a different kind of power. He's just like doing something with his Mashadar dagger power. Something, something evil magic. Yeah. And you know what I think? I think it's cool. It's so cool. I don't care. So we don't give a shit. Uh, so Rand wipes hot juice from his chin because uh, he's eating the pie. <laughs> Two men approaching the bootmakers made him turn away and pretend to peer through the bubbled panes of the cutler's small shop window at a display of scissors and knives fastened to a board. Is it a charcuterie board? Probably. I hope so. So, yeah, it's it's Charles Gedwin and uh, Torval, but it's not. And Rand licks some greasy crumbs from his gloves. I'm hungry now. And I uh, try to find... Yeah, so, you know, as as you say... I guess it's possible that an, uh, an evil Ashaman has a well and is making this illusion, but I don't know. Uh, Nynaeve does the thing and she lifts them up to the rooftop with the well, which is pretty cool. We learn a little bit more about her Terran Grial. One of them like lets her make a full body shield. Mm-hmm. And Land is like, Nynaeve, you good? You seem a little quiet. Um, yeah. Why is she? Why is she? What's she thinking about? What's on her mind? The fact that Land could die. I didn't think before, she said quietly. I was thinking of it as an adventure. Confronting dark friends, renegade Ashaman. But you were going up there to execute them. Oh. You'll kill them before you know before they know you're there if you can. Oh. Won't you? Yeah. So it's like not fair. It's rough and and they kinda nod and she looks at the building and then she goes Kill them in your kill them in their sleep if you can. I mean it's rough. Scene, I'd rather you know? not be aware it was happening. It's it's rough, but uh, yeah, there you go. You know what I mean. So they, she lifts them up. They sneak in. Yeah, and as you say, Rand is like, "Oh shit, my my, I'm throbbing. <laughs> my my wound is throbbing." You're doing it on purpose. Yeah, now. of course I am. <laughs> uh, but actually, he he sees he sees a bunch of swelling. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the guys, the dead guys. He sees that they're all swollen up. Uh, I heard that happen. And <laughs> and uh, he goes, Fane is here. And then his side starts throbbing. Oh, so it's like a Harry Potter scar. Hashtag trans lives matter. No, I think he's just aware of the wound, like more than usual. Because he thinks about Fane, it makes but the wound it, hurt. But the wound throbs when Fane's around. 
Uh, yeah, Rand I think throbs so. Yeah. When Fane's around, they got a lot of history, you know. So, <laughs> oh boy, uh, Rand's like, why don't you crab walk over here? He 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 comes in and he's like, well, shit, they're dead. Okay, Fane killed them. Weird, wild. Okay, Fane tried to drag us here. Don't give a shit who killed them. Now he realized he did not care who killed them, so long as they were dead. Okay. If a stranger finished the Shiva, it would not matter. Wait, hilarious. Very fucking funny. And hilarious. something that we will get to talk about next episode. Because that's like totally what happened. Do you want to take a quick success soundbite for being right about Deshiva, by the way? Do you want yes? Yes, you're not. Of nodding. course, of course. God, I'm such a smug motherfucker <laughs> at this point. You like, s- like he showed up. I haven't up. been wrong in a while. Well, not as far as you know. He I'm not sh- wrong about it. He anything. showed up and you were like, it might be this guy. Bananas. I don't know. I just felt like they had made a point to kind of point him out. So, uh, Fane is there. Yeah. So, you know, he's there. He tries to you know, dagger, sword fight, everything wild. Uh, well, and then he started licking his lips at people. And I was like, mm, nope, that's evil shit. I told you he's mine, the bony man screamed, dancing away from Ran's cut. Mine. <laughs> Patton Fane shrieked, leaping back again as the lan rushed into the room. Kill the ugly one. Rude. D- Rude. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Lan on the show. <laughs> but, I mean, that's inaccurate. So, yeah, totally- I know we all have different tastes. I know there's, yeah. there's a lid for every pot, yeah. but... Wrong. And there's no such thing as objective attractiveness, whatever, whatever. Uh, he's objectively hot. Torm Ryden's just kind of there. I like to imagine this conversation between Torm Ryden and Patton Fane. He's like, hey, dude, let's go hang out in an attic. I know that you had goals to be like ruler of the sovereign nation of Kyrian. Instead of that, let's hang out in the attic and hope to stab and hope to stab the dragon. Just you and me. Damn, I'm so. But also, you're not allowed to stab the dragon. Only I can stab the dragon. Yeah, you don't even get the glory of having stabbed the dragon. You just get to kill the ugly one. So, you know, as you pointed out, yeah, the closer that Fane gets to Rand, the more his side wound hurts and the farther away, the less. And Okay, so this is what I'm saying. It's yeah, like the it's, Harry it's Potter wild. star. Trans lives matter. Uh, yeah, and like, the, he... <sighs> He he tries to follow Fane, and Fane is talking to himself. He goes, I want him to know who is killing him. I want him to know. But if he's dead, then he'll stop haunting my dreams. Yes, yes. He'll stop then. And he raises his hand, and then Torval and Gedwin come up the stairs. I would specifically be like, I will not actually stop haunting your dreams. I will haunt you even more. I'll haunt you in real life. And Gedwin, illusion Gedwin. So yeah, this is Fane. Fane does this. He He makes a vision of them coming up the stairs. And Gedwin goes, I say we aren't going near him until I know where the others are. The male will kill us if and Rand instinctively attacks them. Uh, and also manages to gash Fane, because I guess like Fane made his his distraction and then hid behind. Well, what the... I'm assuming is he like ran down, started running down the stairs. Oh, OK. And created the distraction behind him to confuse Rand. But then when Rand slashes the distraction, he cuts Fane. Right, like he's still behind it. But Fane like, is coming at him. And then I don't know. It's 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 a little confusing, but you know what? It's Fane. He can do what he wants. I yeah, I don't know if he's thinking rationally. So Lan comes up to Fane runs and Lan can say, like, "Hey, yeah, I killed that dude." Uh, yeah, or but at least d- took he's care covered of him. in cuts. He got he got got yeah because Torm Ryden is good at fighting. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "We got to get." He's not Let's good jet. enough, unfortunately. Oh, no. But not good enough, unfortunately. <laughs> Leave both versions in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they yeah, they sneak out, and it's very dramatic. It's very exciting, and uh, Lan almost falls off the roof. You remember this? Lan falls off the roof. Lan almost falls off the roof. And then Rand does. Yeah. Yeah, Rand falls off. Lan Wait. catches him. Yeah, it's, it's a very dramatic And in a dramatic very moment. dramatic Lion King-esque moment, which is not a movie I've ever seen, but I'm just being sarcastic because yeah. obviously, um, and Lan they, catches him mm-hmm. and is like holding onto him, and Rand's like, "Let go." No, Lan says, "Let go." Oh, you're right. Yeah. No, so, Rand catches Lan because Lan fell off the roof. Rand catches Lan. He also falls off the roof. But then, no, because he grabs Lan and he's like, 
I'm not letting go. And Lan's like, let go, let me fall. Ma, Malkir. And then, <laughs> and then Rand loses his grip, I think. Rand also falls off the roof. But one of them is grabbing onto the other one. Yes. So what is happening here is Rand, Lan slips. He falls off the roof. Rand grabs him. Lan pulls him over. Rand uses his other hand to grab something else. He's not sure what. That's what I said. And then he loses his grip and they both fall off the roof. Yeah, but it, Together. the way you were describing it, it sounded, I may have misheard you. It sounded, you can't, were you bean dipping me while we're podcasting? Because <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like, don't tell me what I said. Well, it sounded different. Maybe I was just parsing it wrong. I'm going to bean dip you. Bean dip. Let go, Lan said quietly. He looked up at Rand, his eyes cold and hard, no expression on his face. Let go. When the sun turns green, Rand told him. <laughs> what? When the sun turns green. I like it. Uh, whenever, I would have just said fuck no, but. Whatever his fingers had caught broke with a sharp snap. Different strokes. And the alley rushed up to meet them. And that's the very dramatic and very cool end of chapter 33. Chapter 34, Alley, is called The Hummingbird's Secret. I don't know why that chapter title's funny to me. Why not? It sounds like... It sounds like a, like a lady's spa. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. <laughs> or like, like, a, like a beauty product yeah. marketed to women. Because our beauty products are, are called the dumbest shit. All the time, it's like, go get them, girl. Girl power. Pink sparkle unicorn. And then, man, it's like, darkness. <laughs> Captain. Murder. Existential crisis. <laughs> You're not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing tools. Toxic masculinity. Thumbs up. <laughs> Withholding tears. <laughs> Burying um, your thoughts. Unshed tears would absolutely unshed be. Unshed tears. Unshed tears would ah! absolutely be a deodorant. Yeah, yeah. And it's always win. And there's always winter green. Yeah, winter That's green is evergreen. It's always winter green, and then like forty five other like frost. And you're yep. like, why? But then with girls, with women, it's like pomegranate passion. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's like. um Guava, have a guava. Cocoa, uh, cuckoo for coconut. <laughs> <sighs> oh boy, uh, Ali, this is chapter Girl logo. boss guava. <laughs> I like that. This chapter logo was it? Um, it is a tear. It's the teardrop. Uh, who, who are we with? Is it? Are we getting an immediate resolution on these motherfuckers fell off the roof? No, no, it's ninety. Ninety. There's a crowd that's formed, and then she realizes that all of them have been arrested, and that is the end of chapter thirty-four. It is. No, wait. That is the end of ninety's perspective. She sees a crowd. She realizes that they've all been arrested. She and Min frantically try to like stop this from happening. Yes. Stop Lan and Rand being arrested for channeling slash fucking murdering people. <laughs> hey, they well they killed Torum. Uh, yeah. Fuck that guy, though. That guy sucks. Like, like, and yeah, well, fuck Tora. May he rest in pieces. Um, but so I, yeah, so, so then Min's like, we he, gotta go. He and he could have gotten golomed. Who in this series deserves to get golomed? Uh, oh, David Hanlon. David Hanlon. Thailand. Thailand. Um, most of the Forsaken. Most of the Forsaken. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. I'm done. <laughs> trying not to be too obvious about watching the alley beside the can <laughs> what is I'm going just, on my throat is so dry today i'm just picturing her being really obvious yeah no she's she's definitely like non quote-unquote nonchalant looking and, and i just want to see zoe robbins try to not look obvious but look really obvious nine eve set the folded length of flat green braid back on the hawker's tray and slipped her hand inside her cloak to help hold it shut against the wind She's got her belt on. She's looking around. And yeah, as you say, a commotion down the street. And oh, no. That's where the boys are. Yeah. And uh, the guardsmen, yeah, they have wooden rattles. They're running around. She's. It's funny that Nine Eve is talking to a braid seller. Uh, yeah. Not a ton to discuss beyond what you said. She's worried. 
and Min is there. Cad Swain is also there. Olivia is also there. Min goes, uh, he, ooh, I think he fell. I, I think he's unconscious, but he's hurt. I, I don't know how badly. Cad Swain's like, all right, fuck it. Fuck it. Where are we going? Let's fucking move. We got to get out of here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. We got to move. We got to move. They're going to have detected Sidar because you chant a little bit. So let's fucking get out of here. Uh, Nynaeve goes, let me go. I, I have to go back and help them. You've done quite enough already, you fool girl. I told you about farm addings, watchdogs. <sighs> you put a panic in the councils with your channeling where no one can channel. If the guards have them, it is because of you. Nine, he was like, well, it was just like a little bit, like a little tiny bit. It was a smidgen. And she's like, curse your smidgen. Yeah, so Nynaeve desperately wants to help. You got your husband killed. Min, Olivia, and Cad Swain are like, Which definitely no, de-escalates the situation. We weren't so, I, I don't want them to go in the fucking first place. And Cad Swain's like, don't worry about it. I know what to do. So then Cad Swain goes to the, t- the, 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 the palace. Yeah, stop bean tipping me. <laughs> it's so distracting. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> uh, for people who don't know what bean dipping is, it's when you basically like... It's when you do this. You can't see it. I know. It's, it's hard to describe, and essentially it consists of flipping somebody's pectoral tissue up and then flipping it back down if, you know, it moves. Uh, so... Oh, it'll move. It moves I bean, most I'm time. very good at bean dipping. She is. Uh, uh, only do that if the other party says it's okay. Uh, I'm sorry, you said to stop. It's all right. You pl- it's okay when you do it's it to me. It's just something fine. I'm it's enjoying. It's funny, and I'm enjoying that it's funny. So we're going to keep moving. Rand, uh, no, Cad Swain, and she's like, how the fuck are we going to get them out? What are you going to do? And she goes, much more than I want to, girl. And if I can do anything at all. But I made the boy promises, and I keep my promises. I hope he remembers that. We switch to he Rand. Wants. How's Rand? Oh, he's fucking awful he's doing bad he's having ptsd flashbacks on ptsd flashbacks big flashbacks because he's, he's in a, in a he's box in a, he's in a cell yeah a dark cell a dark cell reminiscent of a box like he can't really fully stand up i think uh no he can stand it's just a small space but yeah so he's having a absolute fucking panic attack meltdown yeah so is loose theron but well, he's, that's he's, he's, not new. He's trying his best to keep it together, but of course he's not because of how trauma works. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they're going to send me back to Elida. It's going to be bad. And he starts yelling about how he won't surrender. He goes, I'll be as hard as I need to be. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know this is a very serious moment. And he feels bad because he's thinking about more. He's, he starts just listing women. Oh my God. Again? Well, that'll that'll help. Uh which I assume he's doing the thing that I do sometimes when I'm in a bad thought spiral. And then I think, what else can I feel bad about? How can I keep this good time rolling? I think he's also doing this. I've learned not to do that anymore. I think he's also doing this to distract himself from the situation. Okay. But you know what I do when I want to distract myself from the situation. Now think about all the people in my life that are dead. Well, yeah. You know, like I've got a lot of people in my life who are dead, like a lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't list them. Yeah. Uh, when uh, I'm in a bad mood, uh, switch. To- uh, you know what I I list. You know what I think about when I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm stressed out. What my Sims families and how I can make their lives better. When I was reading these books and I was trying to fall asleep and I was stressed out, I thought about the books. Because I kind of feel yeah. like I'm the Sims people's god. That's kind of the premise. Yeah, it feels good because I'm a benevolent god. No, for, you're fucking not. For the most part. You've, you've walked me through the twisted and depraved things you do to your Sims. <laughs> That's not that twisted and depraved. Uh, compared to what other, other people, people do to their Sims. Things. Yeah, it's still pretty I wild. Do, I don't murder them. Yeah, okay. So it's <laughs> high bar. I don't murder them. I, I let them live le- long lives and sometimes accidentally kill them. Sure. Well, that's any video game. Uh, but then I I don't undo it because it made the story interesting. So usually. we we switched to Cad Swain. I just like having little telenovelas. How's Cad Swain? Walk me through this rescue. Um, Cad Swain's good. She walks in. She's like, "You're gonna let both of them free." And the lady's like, "Why didn't you tell me the Dragon Reborn was in my city?" Mm-hmm. And Cad Swain goes, "That's not the gotcha you think it is, sis." <laughs> Um, she goes, I don't have to tell you shit. I'm Cad Swain Sedai to you, ma'am. And she goes, and you're going to let them free because she has like black. Ma- she just, oh, she she intimidates her with magic. Yes. She goes, I think you've forgotten that I'm fucking I Sedai and I can do what I want. 
even when you have all these protections against Isodai, which probably is not going to do a lot of good for the Isodai PR. No. But who gives a fuck? The Dragon Reborn is on the line. So she uses Nynaeve's little jewelry piece. Have we figured out what it is? Is it a necklace? No, Nynaeve's got a necklace. Or is I she don't wearing... remember. It's a belt. It's the belt. Or does Lan have the ring back? What? The ring he gave her where he's like, you can give this to anyone. And I don't remember. She, but she's got the belt. You're talking about the well? The well is a belt. It's a belt? The Yeah. Oh, okay. I believe the well is so the not, belt. So Cat Swain's got the belt. She has a shitload of jewelry. Because she, ha- she has all these Terran Grail jewels. And she also thinks that Cad Swain's hairnet might be a bunch of Terran Grail as Probably. well. Probably. Yeah. So she uses... She uses the little well to fuck with the queen. Yeah. And the queen's like, oh, shit, you can have him. But get out of here, all of you. Yeah, they they they, they discuss. Nynaeve objects to things in the plan. Cad Swain tells her, shut the fuck up if you want to be involved at all. Uh, and they bust into a, a council meeting and the councils are like, how oh, idiots leave, dumb. I hate you, stupid fucking people. Why don't you get out of here? And Cad Swain goes, you know who you have in the cells. Who? And Elias goes, a number of men, I believe. Public drunkards, various foreigners arrested for fighting or stealing. A man from the borderlands taken just today who may have murdered three men. I do not keep a personal record of arrests, Cad Suane said I. And Cad Suane goes, so you'll try to conceal that you hold the dragon reborn. I can take him off your hands. I've faced more than twenty men who could channel over the years. He holds no fears for me. And Elias is like, that's good, man. We're going to call up Elida. We're going to say, we've got your boy. You know, we're following the rules you set out. Come get your man. It's all good. We don't need you to help. And Cad Swain goes, perhaps I should have mentioned earlier, these men behind me are Ashaman. Fuck. And she's, she's... So directed at the queen? Yes. Uh, so... It's just This is going to be with I, any I, fuck around to find I'm out I'm having too much fun with that joke. Um, oh, no. We hate to hear you have fun. So, that's not why we're here. So every now and again, I like, we get a review that's like, I wish they would summarize the books more and what? not have fun. And I'm like, R- why? So just, Then just listen to the audio book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do you, but I just don't think we're going to be for you then. <laughs> um, so, well, might I suggest the audio book? That would help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they summarize the books very thoroughly. Elias goes, "I told you once that Ashaman were free to visit so long as they obeyed the law. We have no fear of Ashaman, Kadzuane. Though I must say, I'm surprised to see you in their company, particularly in view of the author you've just made." And Kadzuane is like, "Uh huh." Hey, what else happened today of note? Nynaeve. Someone channeled in the city. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shitty. And she's like, yeah, you know, you know what? I don't give a shit, cats. Like, you know what, girl? I think it was like a glitch. Um, I'm going to chalk that one up to, oops, <laughs> oops. She's the, like, you The Guardian is only 90, 99.9% effective with human intervention. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's that's if you're considering perfect operation. There's gonna be there's gonna be some little guys slip through the cracks. So you know, don't worry about it. It's just it's just it's just it's just a, it's just a glitch. Are this the Angreal condom? Yes, I a, angry, yes. a magic Angreal condom. No, condoms are significantly con- less effective than that. I'm, I think I'm comparing it to a magic IUD. The magic IUD mathematically. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm just making stupid jokes and having fun. As uh, opposed to the other episodes where we're very serious and never make a single joke. Yeah, well, you know, that's um, us. We're very, very reverent. It really actually says in the description of the podcast, if you look at like the main page, a reverent journey through the Wheel of Time. That's yes. definitely what people signed up for. We uh, kiss the book before we start recording every time. <laughs> Uh, we go Shamala Hamala, and then we kiss the book. What is Shamala Hamala? Oh, there's this really funny guy on TikTok, and he uh, he always has like this little thing that's like in my super fundamentalist church. We had, and he'll like go on this little thing, but there's like a voice distorter, so it kind of like sings whatever he says. Oh yeah, okay. 
And um, and it's always like it was the nineties, and so. But he oh, started talking about yeah, 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 how yeah. he goes to a church where they believed in speaking in tongues. Oh, and one day he just decided to like. Did they have to make pick up a snake up before attention. they spoke in tongues? No, it wasn't. Okay, it didn't go church. that far. But so he was like, I kind of wanted attention. And so I just started saying Shamala, Hamala, like it didn't mean anything. It just came out because I wanted people to pay attention to me because every time somebody spoke in tongues, people paid attention to them. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, boy. So he is like Shamala, Hamala. And then he goes and then everyone started saying it, saying it like they were overtaken by the spirit. Shamala, Hamala. And it happened for like a really long time. And I got the attention I was craving. That'll do it. And it was the 90s. So. So, yeah, we say Shamala Hamala and then we kiss the book. So, yeah, Elias goes, flaws can pass unnoticed for centuries before they're found. And, uh, oh, sorry, this is Cad Swain. Cad Swain goes, even what we think is perfect can have flaws, Elias. Cad Swain drew on her own well, taking in Sidar at a measured amount. She had practice. The little golden hummingbird could not hold near so much as Nynaeve's belt. Flaws can pass unnoticed for centuries before they're found. The flow of air she wove was just enough to lift the gem-encrusted coronet from Elias's head and set it on the carpet in front of the woman's feet. Damn. Once they're found, however, it seems that anyone who looks can find them. Thirteen sets of shocked eyes stared at the coronet. Everybody looks at Elias... And Damer goes, not so much a flaw as a barn door, seems to me. I think it's prettier on your head. And then Nynaeve picks it up and yeets it at Elias and then gently sets it on her head. Wait, how does she yeet it and then set it on her the head? The glow of the power suddenly shone around Nynaeve and the coronet flew toward Elias, slowing at the last instant so that it settled above her bloodless face rather than cracking her head. The Damn. light of Sidar did not vanish from the girl, though. That's scary. Well... Let her drain her well. And Elias goes, Will that be sufficient if we release him to you? And Cat Swain goes, I think it will. <laughs> Cat Swain drew a deep breath. She had promised the boy that whatever she did would be for his good, not the good of the tower or anyone else's. And now she had broken a good woman for his good. I'm very sorry, Elias, she said. You're building up a large account already, boy, she thought. And that is the end of chapter 34. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's really cool. I like Cat Swain. I don't know why people don't like her. I don't get it. I think she's pretty fucking cool right now. Right now. Uh-oh. I can't say what happens or doesn't Uh-oh. happen later. I'm just saying she's really cool right now. And Uh-oh. I, listen, when I was reading these books Uh-oh. for the first time, I felt the same way. And I may or may not still feel the same way where I'm like, Cat Swain's fucking awesome. Yes, a lot of the awesome. time. I love she Kevin. should stop hitting people. Uh, yeah, But so should a lot of them. But so should Nynaeve. So if I'm not going to hold it against Nynaeve, I can't really hold it against Cat Swain. Listen, there's a lot. Well, and Min threw a knife at Rand's head. Yeah, Min keeps throwing knives at people. And, you know. I don't love that. It's not awesome. But again. But like, gonna, I mean, it's also kind of yeah, awesome. It's, it's, it's also. Like, uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah, Al, we got uh, one chapter left. We're going to do it next week because it's a big one and I want to give it all the time it deserves. And we're not currently in a position where we can really be doing the four hour episodes right now. So what? Uh, I know it's very sad. Boo. So one more episode. One more on Winter's Heart. Then we take a break. Then we start Crossroads. Ooh. The book of all books. The best Wheel of Time book, according to probably somebody. Uh, Maybe not. I don't know. I'll be the judge of that. A lot of people argue that four is the best best, and I agree with that. It's my favorite. Which one is that one? Shadow Rising. I love that one. Uh, they're all pretty good. So anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. We have social media. If you want to know what we've got going on, it's linked down below. We also have a Patreon. If you want to support us that way, it's patreon.com slash wheel takes. I always have fun with the way I say that way when I talk mm, about the Patreon. Yeah, I like I mean, it. I, I, always, I always do a little. And you can always leave us a rating and a review, which helps a lot. Other than that, anything else, Allie? I hope you enjoyed our very reverent podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Shamala, hamala.
Thank you again for listening. This was Wheel Takes with Ali and Gus. Music by Alexander Nakarada. 